welcome you all to Quantum Intuition. This is going to be such a fascinating discussion tonight. Uh, we have Pete Smith here, who's the author of Quantum Consciousness. And we're going to talk about this intersection of intuition and quantum physics and uh, consciousness itself. So uh, for those of you who don't know me, I see some new faces out there. Uh, I just want to introduce myself quickly. I'm Kim Chesney, and I wrote a book called Radical Intuition. And I met Pete because, you know, I felt early on when I, I picked up his book, quite honestly, and I said, oh my gosh, this really ties into so much with the work that I've been doing and exploring Intuition Lab with um, intuition as sort of a, a, a way of understanding a new kind of thinking, right? So we've been taught to think uh, with, our, with our thinking mind, our rational mind, but there's a really a new way of thinking when we start to use our intuition and connect with these deeper parts of reality that science is now proving. And that's the really exciting part. So all of this stuff we're gonna talk about tonight is now starting to be proved by science. It's, it's a common understanding of the world and it really is calling us to redefine our own perspective of reality itself. So this, these are some really big questions we're gonna be talking about tonight, really deep stuff, but really good, powerful things that you know, I hope that you'll take away from this night uh, a, a whole different way of looking at reality because I know that through the course of this work I have. Um, so I wanna get started, I wanna introduce Pete. I'm just gonna read his bio uh, to you so you get an idea of, of who he is and where he's coming from literally Australia though, coming from Australia and we're here in the States. So, so we, have, um, we have a nice sort of worldwide connection here with this quantum field. So, um, so about Peter Smith, he is a trailblazer in the field of human consciousness. He was president of the Michael Newton Institute for 10 years. That's the guy who wrote Destiny of Souls and Journey of Souls, great books, very formative and foundational in my own life. Uh, he founded the Institute for Quantum Consciousness to embrace the synchronicities between some of the core principles of quantum physics and expanded states of awareness. His last book, Quantum Consciousness, Journey Through Other Realms, documents the philosophies, methodologies, and case studies behind the quantum consciousness experience. It's an out-of-body journey that embraces alternate reality, parallel lives, and interdimensional consciousness. Uh, how cool is that, right? Well, welcome, Pete from Australia. Thank you for being here. Hi, Kim, and good morning, afternoon, and evening to everybody. It's uh, bright and early here, and I want to tell you guys that the good news for you is tomorrow shows up because <laughs> it's currently Wednesday for me and yes. a couple of my friends that are out there as well that I can see, uh, Derek and Mary and a few other people that I know. So uh, I've been very excited about this. Um, you know, Kim blasted off into this work uh, last August sometime, and uh, we've had some great conversations. And the chance to meet you all today and to do this together is something I just couldn't miss. Absolutely. I love it. I love that you're, you're like literally coming to us from the future, you know, talking about the timelessness of reality. It's relative. He's, he's coming here from the future. <laughs> So, you know, I, what, what are the things that I love so much um, about your work is how you've, you really introduce a lot of concepts. And as we go through, I'm just, we're going to start the event off. I'm going to ask a few questions. We're going to have a conversation, Pete and I, that are really going to dig into some of these really key concepts in the work that we both do. And, and then Pete is going to take you into a workshop for the second portion, which is about in about 20 minutes. It's called um, the river of alternate realities. And I can't wait to do this. I've actually done private work with Pete and it's amazing. Um, it really is gonna take you into another dimension and allow you to personally experience some of the stuff we're talking about. So be, uh, be prepared to do that in a little bit. If you have a pen and paper around, you might need that just to take some notes or do some journaling, right? Um, but in the meantime, you know, we're just gonna start talking about some of these ideas that are, that are really important and groundbreaking. Like that word groundbreaking is so important to this work because one of the things I always say in radical intuition is this little phrase where I, where we say knowing is the new thinking, right? So just this idea of knowing, of having the intuitive experience of connection that comes by, by thinking in a quantum fashion is, is really a shift than what we've been taught to do, which for our whole lives, we've been taught to go A plus B plus C plus D to get to the answer. But when we start to think intuitively or with our quantum mind, we can go from A to Z like that. It's like a wormhole. And that's you know one of the words I use when I, we talk about going through this wormhole of intuition just to naturally arrive at this experience. So as we start to understand intuition 
uh, which is sort of like my, my wheelhouse in this conversation, intuition is the medium by which we can do all these things because we're able to do things that the thinking mind can't do as it's trapped in time and space and linear thinking. The quantum mind can go into these places and instantaneously experience these things that are beyond our typical thinking mind. So we want to think about this idea of quantum thinking, of exploring uh, this realm. There's one really big idea that I think we need to start out with, which when I learned about it really kind of blew my mind, which was the idea of a non-local field. This field, this quantum field that connects all of us, science, physics has proven, literally proven now. This isn't just something that, you know, we're going woo woo and we're saying we're all connected kumbaya. Like this is a real thing proven by science an omnipresent quantum energy field. And I want to start off with a quote from Paul Levy. He wrote a book called The Quantum Revelation, which is also really interesting on this topic. And this sort of sums up in my eyes, um, you know, what we're talking about tonight. And he says, non-locality is an expression of an underlying outflowing information filled field, which connects and inextricably links every part of the universe with every other part in no time. This could be one of the most profound discoveries in all of science. And so if you think about that and the implications of that, so I'm gonna turn it over to Pete in a second to talk about what that means and what that whole interconnected quantum reality and all the, the, the dimensions that come with that, um, what that means for us in our personal life. How do we use that? How, how do we work with that? How do we use that to understand who we are and our purpose and, and our path in life? And so these are the big questions. So. To get this conversation going, Peter, can you like share with us a little bit about your understanding of this quantum field and how we participate in it? The beauty of the quantum field, Kim, is that you know we see that we talk about the quantum field, and scientists talk about the quantum field. We're part of the quantum field. I mean, the whole universe has this infrastructure of energy, and that is powered by consciousness. So we are, we are the energy, we are the consciousness. And in order to explore these different places, all we need to do is transport our awareness to these other places. Now, through our intention, we create that because we're interacting with this quantum field all the time. And when they discovered quantum entanglement a long, long time ago, and something would happen over here and something else would happen over here because they had been connected previously, it's like it was instantaneous. There wasn't even any time for a message to go from here to here this particle turned and the other one responded. You know, even Einstein called this spooky action at a distance. So we are part of this field. All we need to do is to remember that we're part of this field and all of these other resources come to us. And you and I had a conversation about, you talk about the internal intuition and I talk about the external field and, and, and I'm, they're one because it's all one field. And it's just our point of reference as to whether we think it's out there or we think it's within here. When we learn how to interact with the quantum field, you know, I, I feel that that's where a lot of our intuition comes from. But we just need to remember that we can do it. And there are times before we entered these bodies that we did know this. And if we have this, uh, this awakening within human form and we see these incredible experiences that are just at our fingertips, we step into them and know that we can do them, life changes. I love that. And um really talking about, you hit on something that I think a lot of people are interested in, um, is this idea that there was a time when we knew this or remembered this, and now some reason, you know, we have to awaken, we have to wake up to kind of move into this conscious awareness of it. So, so why do you think it is that we aren't aware of it now, and, and we, at, we were at one time? I think there's a veil of forgetfulness that comes to us with each of our incarnations. Um, if we were to know that we were timeless beings out time of, outside of time of space of an eternal nature, and we tried to download all of that knowledge into this human brain, we'd probably break the wiring. <laughs> so it's, it, it's like every life that we have, we get this fresh start. We get this new chance to make a difference to uh, our learning, to our life of others. It's like everybody is a book and each of our lives is a chapter. But there's something specific to these times that is really important. And that is that everybody is waking up to the fact that they are the book and not the chapter. Mm. Or they have the opportunity to do so. Mm. You know, they're not burning people like you and me at the stake anymore, Kim. So 
you know, we've reached a point where people can actually start to explore and to remember the, their magnificence and from there completely turn their lives around. Now, um, this forgetfulness, um, we've reached a point in humanity's history where we need to do things differently. The world is in turmoil. We've seen a lot of this over the last couple of years. The thing that is going to change humanity for the better and take us into a new golden age is for us to remember who we really are. Mm. It sets us free from a lot of the old dogmas, the restrictions, the, you know, the rules and the regulations of a place that is based around the human and not necessarily about the quantum beings that we all are. We need to be set free into this field to discover who we are both as individuals and as humanity generally. I love that. And I love that term that you use. I've heard you use this term before of discovering our magnificence. Uh, and I, I say something similar in, in radical intuition about knowing that we're extraordinary, right? So, and, and that's really a key point because we forget that. We get so conditioned by our lives uh, to, to see ourselves in terms of these, this smaller picture and this smaller ego identity without realizing that there is this magnificent, extraordinary dimension within and around uh, that, that really is um, our true identity. And I agree 100% with you that you know, it's no coincidence that science is discovering this stuff at the same time that we're becoming aware that this is our true nature and how important it is for us to sort of make this next evolution, so to speak, into expanded consciousness, into understanding our connectedness, right? Because it's that connected connectedness that's key. Because if we realize that we weren't so separate, if we realize we weren't so different, then maybe, you know, we could come together as a, as a race instead of fighting each other all the time, instead of our ego working from our different egos and different perspectives, understanding the beautiful world we live in and how we could appreciate it and participate it in sync instead of at odds with each other, right? Yeah, yeah I Absolutely. really- Absolutely, I think that, yeah, go on. No, 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 go ahead. I there's a slight delay on my satellite dish, so sometimes uh, we cross over by half a second. I believe that the world has been set up for separation, and I don't believe that's the natural form of humans. I believe that we're all about oneness, but we've been set up uh, for separation by three things. The first one is uh, our political systems. Mm -hmm. You know, whether you're, you're red or blue or, in my country, liberal or labour, you know, um, in, a, in England, it's Tory and Labour. Whatever it is, we've been set up divisively at the highest level of leaderships in our country. So that, that goes against oneness because we're all people yep. and we're all citizens of one nature. The other two is one of them is wealth. We're always going to have separation. Some people are rich, some people are poor, some people are middle class. So we try and segment people by their material wealth, which has nothing to do with the quantum field. So we've got these different, these different ways of doing it. And we, we separate in other ways. We separate by religions. We separate by, by creed. We set about colour, health, all of these different things. We look to segment people and keep them apart. When all of us are actually part of the one quantum field, humanity is one people on one planet and living together and dropping those barriers is something that puts us into a collective consciousness that has um, one pure intention for everybody and that's to be the best that we can and make a difference to this world i, I believe that's the future of humanity and it's emerging quickly amen amen so let's talk about that let's talk about what that looks like um what does it look like to understand and i think this is this we get into some of the juicy stuff now we're talking about things like um parallel lives and alternate realities and interdimensional consciousness like these are big deep words um but how, how, what does it really look like in our life when we you know, live day to day with understanding of these realities? Could you maybe talk a little, a bit, a little bit about how um, you know, your, your perspective of life changed when you realized how this work uh, really integrates into human existence? Well, the first time I had an experience that went sort of beyond my body, you know, and I looked back at my body and I thought, wow, that's, there's Pete over there. <laughs> So who, so who am I out here? If I'm not Pete, then who am I really? I'm simply more. You know, back in the old days when I first started to get into this work 30 years ago, I went to a past life therapist. Then I discovered life between lives. Uh, I, got, I was so inspired. I got trained as a hypnotherapist 
you know, 20 years ago. Then I went further, discovered quantum physics, the sciences. All of this is a path that takes us by one little discovery and we validate those discoveries along the way. Without going into too much detail, I'll give a really practical, small example of tapping into the quantum field. Um, a, a lot of people are into this new word game called Wordle. You guys doing Wordle? This little yes. game thing that you do every day, you know? And I like that because it sort of sharpens me up a little. So, you know, I, I live in a very remote area, hence the satellite dish. And my partner was visiting family and I, I had spent like a few days by myself just writing my next book and, and all that sort of stuff. And I'm just, I'm really immersed in the quantum field because I live in the middle of the bush. Okay, so I'm out there in nature. And I thought, I'm going to bring that energy into Wordle. And I asked the quantum field to give me a word that um, will help me with Wordle today. So I did this the first day and I put the first word in and I got a lot of hits and I got Wordle in two moves. Okay, and I thought, wow, that's, that's the probabilities of that is quite impossible. And then the whole human part cuts in, maybe you're lucky, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I did it again the next day and I asked for a word and I think the, the word came through sweet, S-U-I-T-E or whatever it was with my first word. And then, this, and then I got it on the second word again, two days in a row. And I thought, wow, this is about tapping into intuition and this is about listening. And I asked the universe for a word out of the field and the word came. And it wasn't the word for Wordle because I love to play Wordle and challenge my intellect as bit as well. So, but the two days in a row, it gave me a word where I could get it on the second second one interesting now since i've played wordle two days since and then i got it in four this morning and i think five yesterday wow. because i deliberately wasn't tapping into the field because i didn't want to break wordle for everybody I mean, just <laughs> right right i mean if we had if we had like a billion people around the world getting it in one or two moves then the wordle people would get so <laughs> upset so but that's that that was like a really interesting little experiment and and you know i encourage anyone to run your own series of experiments into the quantum field and see what comes for you but uh, it's it, intuition is what it's all about it's how we read the quantum field i think we're going to do that in intuition lab how about guys, remember that guys we're going to do some wordle games see if we can uh, we can make that work i love that <laughs> And, and I, you know what else? I, I love what you just said earlier and how you opened this whole, whole thing up about talking about how, um, you know, having that sort of out of body experience or for anybody who's had an experience like that. And, and you know, a lot of people don't talk about it, but I think it's actually happened to a lot of people. And, um, you know, I heard it said somewhere once that consciousness is not a function of the body. It's a function of the field. Right. And that really struck me. And it, it, and it made my own out of body experience make sense. Like, because it was a question of like, well, how can, where, how is this me? If I'm looking at me, if, I'm, if my me is here, how am I here? Understanding that co consciousness works through the field, the, the quantum field, not necessarily being in the brain. Right. So, so that really shows how we connect and we expand beyond this local space, right. That it, it is something non-local and something that you can pull this little bits and pieces on it. And in fact, the um, uh, Erwin Laszlo wrote a book about the Akashic field, really identifying the Akashic field as the quantum field, the, the, the same thing, right? So we talk about the Akashic field and it really just is a place where we store all of that information that you can just pull down in those little pieces. Uh, and it's not something that's so woo woo after all. We're thinking, oh, it's just this crazy thing. But really, that data is out there. It's stored in the hard drive of the universe, this eternal place. And we just download it to our little individual uh, hard drives of our computers to process it. And it, it is a lot like that. So, so I'm really intrigued by uh, how you sort of put this all together in terms of these layers of realities and, and multi, multi dimensions. So, so how does this work, this process of, of interacting with the field in terms of different dimensionalities? Well, what we do during the quantum consciousness experience is we take somebody further and further and further out of their body. And it pulls together, you know, people have done a bit of past life work or they've done some um, astral traveling or they've done some age regression to solve trauma, whatever it might be. People have done a lot of experiences that are transcendent, if I can call them that. 
what we do with the quantum consciousness experience is, and, and this is from a, a person who's had two hypnotherapy schools, you know, I did all that work with the Newton Institute. So hypnotherapy was really my field. And I had to surrender a lot of the tools and techniques around that kid to take everything to the next level. Mm -hmm. And rather than take people down into a trance state, we started to lift them gently out of their body into the field and set them free. Yes. So it's like, you know, we weren't digging a hole anymore down into yes. the subconscious. We yes. Were sending Thank them up you. into the universe like a kite on a string. That's what I've been saying. So, and, 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 and we would we'd sometimes we're holding onto the string for dear life yes. because they're out there exploring. So yeah. when we move further and further out through these different realms of consciousness that we work with, uh, we move out through stored consciousness where there's anything in this timeline that people wish to understand and, and we ask other aspects of them to come forward whether they're in um, you know a, 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 an intention of serving both the person that comes forward the other version of us and ourselves everything is done on a higher vibration we don't look for trauma we transcend it mm. so if there's a five-year-old that comes forward they may just as easily be trying to remind you about what freedom really looks like mm. and see through 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 the uh, eyes of a child with awe and wonder doesn't mean that five-year-old has got some trauma right. so we move out through these and, and i'm sitting here and I'm, I'm 58 in this moment um, but i'm timeless in other ways so i'm sitting here at 58 and i might do a session and my 70 year old comes forward with some advice and some thoughts for me so in that type of field when we're beyond time and space anything can happen from there we move into alternate realities and we'll talk a bit more about that in a moment from there into parallel lives which is us in other bodies some people might see this as past lives, but anyone's ever done any past life work, you were there. That's not past at all. They're still happening. They're unfolding in parallel with these lives. So we call them parallel lives and we can learn so much from them. Then we go out into interdimensional and that's when we may explore our consciousness in uh, another type of body, in another dimension, whatever that may be. NASA tells us there's like a, a billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy. I mean, seriously, we're only one of them. We only know one of them. Do you reckon there's not other life forms out there? Do you reckon this isn't the only place you can incarnate? Yeah. So, you know, there's so much in the interdimensional realm. And then we move out into what we call the eternal realm, the all there is. And we just blend with the fabric of the cosmos itself into the all there is. And people just rest there for a while. So we take them out through these different realms of consciousness and they just get whatever they need in each of them, all with the higher intention. And the whole time the facilitator is doing it uh, enables this because we hold the knowing for them that they are this incredible spiritual being who is multidimensional and is transcendent. And this is the day that their journey happens. We hold that knowing, we quantumly entangle with them and it works to lift them up off the launch pad and out into the universe itself. Where well, they witness their magnificence absolutely it was no, there the whole time they just had to remember exactly right right and, and that is yeah. so true and one of the things that struck me and i I've, I've done one of these journeys with with pete so i know exactly what he's talking about and uh, one of the things that still stays with me about when we did this um was when we got to one of those levels you know sort of i don't even know how far out we were we were getting pretty far out and um and and one of the the, the images that still touches me and is still with me energetically is this image of this sort of army of, of souls, but like a good army of like souls and souls and souls that are out there, like bringing light, this army of like light workers, just standing and wanting to like bring this energy in and bring all of this um, wisdom and understanding into, into this world and the world that you know that we're creating so it's all it's touched my heart and stayed with me in, in a real way that's abiding uh which tells me intuitively that that's a sense a validation of its truth and its power that we aren't even alone in doing this that there are you know there's so so many things we don't understand about life and being and um all of the dynamics that are out there in the universe but we're participating in something bigger we're we are just these sort of small points of light that are doing our part in this really big beautiful process of expansion of life in the universe so it's all very magnificent when, when you really start to behold it in, in all of its wonder and one of the things that we we have to do as the facilitators of such a journey is that uh, we have to surrender the need to be a therapist Yes. Because therapists go through a process and they direct people and they help them heal and all that sort of stuff if we want to truly allow someone to 
express and experience their magnificence, then the kite goes where the kite needs to go. Right. And we just hold the string. And sometimes we'll guide a little or we'll help the kite understand where they are and what's going on. But it completely changes the way in which we go about this work. And, and I, had to, I had to surrender being a hypnotherapist, taking people down to trance. I had to surrender being a therapist um, and understand that people had their own answers. And my role was simply to put them in touch with their magnificence. Fundamentally changed the whole philosophy with how I work. And it's what we teach to people now. And people are no longer broken. They're just waiting to remember. I love that. That's a great quote. That really is. And just remember that. Remember. So on that note, tell me, um, let's let's talk about uh, this, this idea of alternate realities. We're going to move into the workshop portion of, of this. So um, I, I'd like maybe you start off by just explaining a little bit about this alternate reality and what, the, what it is. Without getting too sciencey. In 1957, a guy called Hugh Everett wrote a, his PhD paper, and he was one. He was um, sponsored by one of the great um, quantum physicists, John Wheeler, and he put forward this um, this theory that became known in time as the many worlds interpretation. And what it said, you know, we all most of us have heard of the double slit experiment and the collapse of the wave function, and there's your reality. He put forward that that doesn't happen, and that the whole universe continues to unfold in ever uh, increasing numbers of realities that happen with every decision that we make from those subatomic particles. Am I the particle? Am I the wave? Actually, they're both because it exists in a cloud of possibility. So what that means for us is that every time we make a decision that another path opens. Um, there's the me that took that job in another state when I was 24. There's the me that traveled overseas um, there's the me that stayed home. There's all of these decisions have allowed us to move into these other realities. Now, the beauty of that is that they believe these exist. The maths from string theory tells us that uh, if you look at M theory, which was the accumulation of five different string theories, without trying to get too sciencey again, but it's all based on the premise that there are 11 dimensions. One is time and 10 are space or beyond space or a different space or spaces we don't know, but once you drop time as one of those dimensions, um, you're not restricted by time anymore. So space looks quite different. Mm -hmm. I talk about time space, but if you drop time out of time space, then there's just space and that's where the other dimensions come in. So if you look at the many worlds theory from Everett, if you look at M theory, which was put together, that was the, you know, the one that was put together by Witten back in the late eighties or early nineties, when he amalgamated five string theories, these multi-dimensional, multi-worlds, multi-dimensions, all validated by science and mathematics. So how do we find them? Well, the secret's easy. We're quantumly entangled with our other selves. And we know that across time and space that we form a relationship with other particles and that relationship is forever. So the secret to act actually accessing all of the other realms is to understand that we're quantumly entangled with our other selves. Beyond that, we have a lesser connection uh, with the rest of the universe anyway, because we're one, all one quantum field. But with our alternate realities, because we've come from the same collection of subatomic particles before we went in two directions, then they are a really strong entanglement and we can access it through our observer effect, or as we call it, the creator effect. I wish to contact another me who offers this or does this or whatever. And strangely, when we designed this, it just worked. And somebody said to me once, how did you realize that you contact yourself in other dimensions? And I said, well, it never occurred to me that we couldn't. <laughs> so I guess in some, in, in some ways, that was my own observer effect, effect or creator effect, because I just knew it was possible because the science adds up yeah. and energy adds up. Yes. And, you know, I studied Reiki like 30 years ago and all of these energetic experiences happened. And that was when I first discovered that we were in a universe full of energy. Yes. So um, what I say to all of us here today is that there are other versions of you to bring them into a loving resonance where you can make contact with them that offers you something and offers them something, even if it's just they have some wisdom for you and you can exchange gratitude. Or you want to tell them something to bring them hope and inspiration and they offer you gratitude. 
we set an intention for a positive experience, one that offers you something that's quite beautiful. And, you know, normally these are done one-on-one. -on -one. We're um, a lot more than one-on-one -on -one today. We're two screens of people now by looks of things. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so it's about holding an intention for something that is, uh, is really powerful for you. But I'll give more detail on that in a moment. But that's sort of where we're heading. I love that. I think really starting to understand our personality and our being and our existence, that it, not in terms of time, right? So instead of being bound by this idea of time and locality and, and, and exploring things like even the idea of going back and talking to our past self and because in healing wounds, because a lot, you know, you hear people talk about doing that, like, is there an effect that we can go back to that past self and, and cover them in a time when they needed it and help heal something and get through it. So I love this idea on, on so many levels. And I'm really intrigued uh, to see how, you know, how this works for people and how the kind of experiences people have. So what should we do to get started? Do we need a pen and paper or what should, how do you well, think? Yeah. Well, first of all, I want to invite everybody to partake if they'd like to. You're not obliged to. You can just observe uh, if you'd like to. But I want to set an intention for a positive experience. So if you think about one of those forks in the road, um, it may not be a major one. It may not be a life-changing one. It might just be an interest. I wonder what would have happened if I um, hadn't dropped out of college. I wonder what would have happened if um, I did continue on into that other country at the end of my trip and I didn't come home or whatever it might have been you know so just an intention for a little thing like that but for a positive experience to have a wonderful interaction with another version of you so once you've got that the, what I'm going to do is uh, offer you some words that help you to establish that expanded state now those words um, are called the uh, it's like a remembered resonance and what I'm going to do is, is help you to remember just a, a more expanded part of you. And then we're going to take a, a journey down a river of energy. We're going to enter that river of energy and we're going to drift along and we're going to pop out um, on one of those tributaries. And, and these are the, the river of energy is made up of all of these forks in the road, fork in the road, fork in the road, fork in the road, fork in the road. And we're using the river as a metaphor for the ever expanding realities in which your consciousness resides. So then I'm gonna work you through some very simple interactions with that other person. It may be a version of you, it may be somebody else. Um, it may be a pink elephant, who knows? We have lots of things come up in these things. So uh, whoever turns up there for you is, is perfectly the person that's there for you. And we'll have some interactions. Um, and I'll offer a little bit of reflection time in there and we'll bring you back into the river, bring you back and you might like to, like to write down a couple of details and we'll offer some space for you to do that. And that's a journey that'll probably take us just 15 minutes or something like that. Perfect. That sounds great. And um, is it okay if people turn off their cameras if they want to re relax or do you prefer camera on? Does it make a difference? It doesn't make any difference to me. All right. Okay, great. So I, I would just like to put that out there. If you want to just get really comfortable and I know I like to turn off my camera when I'm meditating. So I'm not worried about, you know, falling over <laughs> whatever it is. So, um, all right. So then, all right, Pete, take us, take us away. Okay. Okay. So just uh, give some thought to your intention for the journey. And that may involve uh, one of the decisions that we talked about. It may involve um, something that's, that's happened in your life. You'd just like to know a little bit more about. And just hold that intention for a beautiful and loving interaction. And then just breathe. And breathe out the human and breathe in your magnificence. And as you continue to breathe, you breathe more of the universe into your being. And you breathe out any distractions or anything that's holding you in this space. Then you start to remember. As you breathe the universe in and you connect with the universe, you start to remember that you are part of that universe. And as the layers of the human self fall gently away now, just know that your natural state of being is free as you continue to expand. Because you are pure consciousness. 
gently embracing your divine state of being beyond all human knowing and imagination. And you are always this. And in this moment, as this is remembered, the gentle surrender into your magnificence brings a profound return to your resonant state felt so easily and naturally. Everything else falls gently away. You are a vibrational being in a universal symphony of light offering your energy to all areas and bringing harmony and resonance to a life that will soon be forever changed. All this felt and experienced as our journey so naturally unfolds. And as you continue to expand now, remembering, knowing that there is so much more and all you have ever been and ever experienced is held within you, always within your reach. Each time we come to a crossroad in our journey, we create new directions new possibilities and we live on within them and in this moment you invite that aspect of you to a meeting place to await your arrival the one that holds the answer that you seek today this beautiful intention of this moment of insight and higher vibration for both of you And as we prepare to move to that meeting place, you sense a beautiful river that flows through a landscape so serene, so beautiful. And this river and the energy it contains is so familiar to you. Observing this river, you feel the energy slowing further and further till it becomes completely still. And as you move into that stillness, you feel yourself floating freely, peacefully, gently drifting along. So peaceful, so tranquil. You journey towards the meeting place. You sense different streams of energy. And one of these streams calls to you. You drift and float towards where the greatest wisdom awaits. As you move along this stream of energy, you send somebody on the bank of the stream. They've answered your invitation to come to this meeting place. And emerging from the flow, you join them. You observe them, sense them, and connect with them. There's a beautiful exchange between you. It might be wisdom. It might be gratitude. The answer to the question that you had gently drifts towards you. And as you move further into this beautiful space, it's like the details behind the answer, the story that they have, starts to drift effortlessly towards you because their story is part of your overall story. And as you feel the loving resonance in which this wisdom is exchanged, 
Just take a moment for that to unfold. And this beautiful journey just brings peace. And perhaps peace is enough just to be in this peaceful place. Get a sense of anything that you may have carried dissolving. Anything that didn't serve you simply drifts away. Perhaps it even changes into the wisdom that you've been seeking. And in this beautiful moment of connection, know that the two of you will always be connected. And that if you ever need to, you can meet again in a way that raises the vibration of both of you. Just allowing that connection to become complete now. And now, all that has been offered is absorbed and will continue to unfold as you bring it back with you and it drifts further into your awareness. And you're drawn back to that river of energy, bringing all you have experienced with you. And as you re-enter that river of energy, gently floating and drifting back to the mainstream, noticing that all the other streams too have changed, reflecting the wisdom experienced on your journey and shared with other versions of you also raising the vibration of your being. And all you have discovered and remembered and all that you truly are is still with you as you arrive back to where you entered the river. You are forever changed. In the days and weeks and months ahead, your life will change to reflect this greater wisdom as you now return to this physical realm and this linear time. The guidance you have received and the resources you have found will continue to grow and expand as the remainder of your life unfolds. New and fresh energy is moving easily through your body and bringing you back to this time, this place, this moment, this reality of the present consciousness. And now you are here, conscious and aware, coming back into this part of space time. I'm just going to offer you a minute or two just to continue to come back into this space and perhaps to even jot down some notes or some thoughts that came. Just allow that to continue. We'll give you another minute or two to do that. Allow that wisdom to continue to flow.
We'll offer you another minute or so. That voice is still flowing. Okay, so we're seeing some nice feedback come through in the comments. That's lovely. Looks like Kim made it back, which is always good as the host. Wow, that was wonderful. So, Kim, um, should we do some shares or would you like to go straight into the Q&A and combine the two? What would work best for us today, do you feel? Yeah, let, well, I think maybe we'll just open up. I, yeah, you're right. I, I see a lot of um, really helpful feedbacks and some great insights coming through in the comments. What does anybody, would anybody like to share, um, share something or, or ask a question of Peter about this experience? I'm gonna put us on gallery so I can, can see some folks. Hi, Melissa, I just saw, saw you now. Um, yeah, so are there any questions or if you, you just wanna raise your hand or come on if you have a, a question or if you wanna share something, if not, I mean, um, what I thought, I'll just, just get things rolling. Um, you know, one of the things that really touched me and we were joking earlier when we were talking because I had done this really uh, deep immersion with him um, doing this little thing and you know where was this going to go or take me somewhere different and it really did and what touched me about it was really the ability for me when I went there I um, I met with a younger version of myself uh, presumably on another path heading in another direction than than where where I was when I was young and um, and it was just this really beautiful exchange and connectedness like she reached out and held my hand and 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 really felt like this united energy and and this phrase came through like we you know we talk about intuition lab things just drop in in these intuitive states and that was a beautiful meditation that you just led us on and just I love the stream leading up to the, the meeting place. And that was such a, a, a beautiful setup for this experience. And one of the things that just dropped in when I had this moment with her was she's the alpha and the omega. And it was just this little bit of insight that, you know, I, I never would have just thought of that, but it's this idea of your young whole self, right? When you're in that state of innocence, almost that state of newness and, and wonder with the world, and then we, you know, life carries on and all this stuff happens and we're faced with our karma and we're faced with pain and, and, little, and our, you know, our kind of magnificence becomes smaller because we, we become critical and we've been hurt and all of this stuff starts to happen. But understanding that getting back there, you know, sort of the full circle is returning to that innocence and that connected that with our whole self that, that we had a little more when we were younger, right? Is that the kind of like feeling and that you can sort of cross over in these these dimensions of time and space to experience those things right absolutely I, I love what you said Kim because it begs the question doesn't it who would we be without our conditioning mm. whether it be societal whether it be familial um Jung used to talk about this I'm a Jung fan for his more expanded stuff not the psychoanalysis stuff but he said we can never truly decide you know, we'll discover who we are until we surrender ourselves from that conditioning. And, and that's a beautiful description of that. We go back to a reset time. Right. When we oh. get access to ourselves in that beautiful state. I love it. I love that because that's exactly what it felt like a reset, right? Like that, that reset of going back to that point in that place where you can, can just 
make that shift and and start living like and I, I told him like you just live true to yourself and you don't let other people tell you who you are and all of those things were things that were coming into my mind as well as as I was going through this so it's fascinating this idea that we can interact in the past in the future and where else did anybody else have like a cool experience about where they went Beth yeah I met a younger version of myself too Kim Yay! Hey, great yeah. mind. <laughs> and um, yeah, you and I do tend to do the same thing sometimes. <laughs> but what was cool, it, it was just kind of this big realization is that the Beth that I met, it was like we were best friends who had known each other forever and there was no like awkwardness. It I realized that I'm my strongest ally, my strongest friend. Mm. Um, it was just this amazing connection that it was like, gosh, you're never alone. Mm, you yeah. always have you. <laughs> I love that, Beth. You know, a lot of times over the years, I've seen these sessions happen, and and the other them has been, well, I've been waiting for you. <laughs> it's funny like that you say expected. that. I love it's that. funny that you say that because that's exactly what I heard. You know, yeah. oh, I've been waiting for you, right? And um, I've done versions of this with an, with another um, and another model, but. Um, I didn't get a version of my, my my physical being. I got a version of my light being, and it was just this big, big, big light that said, "I've been waiting for you. Come and rest with me. Come lay down. Come just rest here. This is this is what I've been waiting for you. Just lay down and soak it all in." And so that was kind of it was yeah. very nice. Thanks, Rita. That sounds cool. And it was very yeah. cool. I love that line. Yeah. That's a great line. Yeah. So, okay. So, and Sarah, so, so Sarah also said that she's experienced like long lost friends. So Beth, and there seems to be a theme building here with all of us and Rita, that, that, that there's this reconnection with a, a part of ourselves that are, is familiar and loving and supportive and whole. Wonderful. Thank you both for sharing that. That's great. I think Melissa, Melissa's got a hand up, I think. Yeah. Well, um, well I, everyone is like saying that it was beautiful and stuff, but my version was a little angry at me. Um, I, it, it was like, it was like a version of me, like in the present, like a, an alternate me, um, more powerful. I'm mm. um, kind of saying, what are you doing? Why, why do you keep looking outside of yourself? Like, stop that, you know, better than that. And you need to own you need to own yourself and you need to start doing the things that you know how to do and stop looking for validation and other people or stuff like that. So, I mean, it wasn't like angry, angry, but it was like this sound of, you know, when your mom is like lecturing you, like, stop it, you know, like a good angry. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my experience. That's great, Melissa. It's, um, it's a powerful message indeed. Um, I think it's interesting sometimes these other versions of ourselves um, use a, a tone and approach that most makes us listen. Yeah. So clearly that was the message that you needed to hear today, I guess. Yes, for sure. <laughs> I think that's why yeah, yeah. I feel like um, she was talking to me in a way that I needed to hear it, you know, yes. I think yeah. if she, if she would be like, oh, honey, you, I would have been like, like, what are you doing? Go <laughs> right but he came in with like this authoritative voice being like you need to stop this insanity and you you know what you you know what you need to do you just need to go and do it and and not not keep because I, I keep doing that I keep thinking that there's something better out there or whatever so I keep in the search and basically what she's saying like there's no search everything that you need it's already with you so like you need to stop yeah. that and like go in. So yeah, I think I think I the think word you for that, some of that stuff down. I was just gonna say I think the word for that is tough love, right? Yes. <laughs> Hold on. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa. Thanks, Melissa. All right. So I think oh next up we have Gary. Come on up, Gary. I'm gonna bring you up. Okay. Hi, Gary. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Kim. Thank you for your wow, what a wonderful experience. What, what I went to is I wanted to see my, uh, if I had a pre-birth planning experience and to see what that was like. And 
it it was wow something else that uh there were three or four people there and one i recognized Ooh. um and it there was absolutely something done a, a planning done and uh, an intention set and, and that was one of my questions i would have I was going to have for you tonight at the Q&A is about pre-birth planning, but I, I think I got my uh, answer on the river. So uh, I really appreciate the meditation. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome, Gary. Feel free to throw that question in uh, into the Q&A anyway. Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. Now, Rachel, I think you were next. Do you still want to ask a question? Yeah, and I got to hop off in a minute, but um, I just wanted to share. So... I didn't meet any part of myself. It was it was me meeting others that had I called in like specific works in my life and and I it was it was pretty wild, right? People showed up and I was like, oh, it's it's you. <laughs> so I appreciated like this this candor of, of meeting these people. And I really I just felt when we were going into that, like all I felt was my heartbeat. It was just like this. And I, I kind of like lost myself and I just felt my heart. It was really wild. And, uh, and then the visualization kind of brought me back, but thank you. Can I just say something? Because I had an experience with my heart too. When I was doing it, I was like, I, had, like, I really felt like my heart chakra, like energy get like activated or something. I was feeling something in my chest. Is, is there anything that happens like that with, with your body's energy when this happens, Peter? Or is that just a coincidence? Well, the thing about our body, Kim, is that it's a portal. Mm. It's the mechanism through which we experience all of this and the universe is available through our body. So, you know, some people think that the body's a prison for their soul, but it's actually a portal to our magnificence. So it would, it would, it would make sense that the beautiful vehicle through which we have so carefully chosen ahead of 8 billion other options ready for this lifetime, um, it makes perfect sense that it should be part of the experience as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> I yeah, love it. Was. it was. So thank you. I gotta hop off. I appreciate thank, it. Thanks for coming, Rachel. <laughs> yeah, thank you, everyone. Uh, Derek, did you have your hand up? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Pete, for that. Thank you, Derek. You all right? It seems to be an echo. Uh, it's probably one yeah. of your other, probably one of your other selves, Derek. <laughs> oh, probably. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I wanted to uh, touch base with a Himalayan monk, uh, past life, and get a hold of their uh, healing ability. And I uh, touched base and met with them. And, uh, you know, I was asking about uh, can I have an exchange of how to heal from their perspective? And, you know, I was expecting, you know, some potions, some, uh, some herb, maybe, uh, you know, all the herbs I've got to mix together. And this was what, give me, what, what they said to me was that it's all about just energy and sending out the energy and the love and being open and to get rid of the, this worldly limited belief of what energy can do. And that would be, you know, and then with on the passage of the river, the different colors, it was pretty awesome. So thank you, Peter. Welcome, Derek. Nice to see you again. Beautiful. And it, you know, that whole thing delivered with your echo was kind of cool. It was <laughs> it kind of gave yeah, it a little magnificent, it was, didn't it? <laughs> it was echoing all of his other selves at the same yes. time. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, did, okay. So any, any other questions, it can, we can open this up now. If you want to just have general questions about the work that, that Pete does, uh, anything about, you know, anything we talked about over the course of, of the session this evening, we have, you know, we have a couple minutes left. So if you're interested, if you have any questions that weren't asked or answered, um, I think Pete would be happy to answer them now. Um, so if you have, 
if you have a question, you could just put your little hand button up so we can see you because we can't see quite everybody. Um, um, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Um, while the questions are, while the questions are Rosemary. gathering, maybe I'll. Rosemary, uh, we'll bring up one. you up. Okay, Thank we'll you. do Rosemary and then we'll go to Gary's question in the oh, comments. Okay, yes, we'll do Gary's next. Sorry, I didn't see that. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Um, you, I think I heard you say that this would continue to unfold, you know, as we go forward. And um, my question basically is, is being open the way to approach it? Just be open to continue to receive uh, the energy, so to speak. And it would make sense to me, I know you're shaking your head, because at the very end, the being that I met actually came into me, transformed into yep. me, mm. and said, I'm with you always. Mm. I'm always here. And, and it, the feeling was wonderful. Mm. And then it was an encouragement, a knowing, a sense to just be open into the future. So yeah. is, is that part of it, Peter? Is that is that part of it? Well, you know, Rosemary, you might have moved to the next step that we uh, we often do on the one-on-one -on -one stuff and that's a great thing but certainly when i when i suggested to all of you that it would continue on that was to keep that connection uh current for you uh it was more of an offering uh whether that suits you or not it's something that you can pursue one of the things that we do love to do is we we love to blend you with this other part of you so that you can hold the frequencies more strongly and um. in lots of the different other ways of our work um, we do that um, very much as a technique in, in order to allow you to stay connected to the wisdom that's involved elsewhere thank as you said that peter i i received chills all up and down my okay. my body which is a gratitude thing so thank you thank you you're welcome rosemary i love that and i'm thank you rosemary for bringing that up because that's a really good takeaway i think for everybody is that really the, the blending of those frequencies and then you have that empowered state that that heals you and revitalizes you on so many levels so that is a, just a really beautiful touch note for this process thank you so much for sharing that yeah. all right all right so then do you want to okay let's talk about um all right, first all right um, let's ask, let's get Sarah's question and then, I, and then let's jump in for Gary's because I think Gary's might be kind of like, a, I, I, wanna, I have some questions about that one too. So that we'll save that one for last. Okay. All right. All right, Sarah, come on up here. Okay. Hello. Hi. Great to see you. Hi, yes, lovely to see you too. So as we took our journey on the river and I ran into an older version of myself who was very much myself, like Rosemary talked about, you're very, it's, um, it's you. And so as you, I received that portion of myself, I seemed to see very large scale, all of the other me's at the different places. Uh, so if you're looking at the river and you talked about the tributaries and all the different places, you could easily see me on those other places as well. And it was almost as if I would fall further and further into myself. Mm -hmm. And it was an experience of like flowing through all of those selves, which is just me still, even though on a scale wise, there's lots of me's, but there's just me. So my question is what tethers us to this me right now that we're having this conversation and not the me that I experienced when I got out of the boat on the river or the other me's that I felt on all the other spaces and, or just myself at large, what puts us in this, in this me right now? Hopefully that made some sort That's of a great, great question. Great question. I, I actually prefer it when questions don't make sense, Sarah, cause they're the really cool ones. That I, like <laughs> I was just hoping but you were you following did. my train of thought. Yeah. Yeah. You actually did make sense. Um, let, let me answer with an analogy. Um, you know, one of those old style radios that you got with the AM, FM band and all that sort of stuff. Um, you change the frequency, you change the dial and a new radio station comes in. And then you change it and you change it and you change it and you change it. But every one of these different realities has a different frequency. Now, you're in this frequency. You're on this particular radio station. And this, of course, is your favourite one. Okay. So this is the one that you listen to every day. 
and this is the station that you're, you're always on. Sometimes you might explore some of the other stations, but you always come back to this one because that frequency is anchored in your body here in the physical as well. Okay. So even though your awareness can leave this frequency and go out and explore others, it still comes back to the home frequency. It's like, um, you know, think of it as a home screen on your computer. You always come back to this, this place as the start point. So your awareness wouldn't necessarily get lost in another reality. And I know that there's been some experiences that people have said where they've visited other realities and been caught there for a while. And I've seen some of those cases over the years. They're extremely rare and they always happen for a greater purpose for that person to show them of what's possible. But um, the decision that you made to incarnate as our Sarah here is the one that has set your frequency to this part of time and space. Now, your body's anchored here, but your awareness is not. So your awareness can travel, but it'll always come back to the body that it's matched with in frequency. So as long as my question. body is here and is physical and is real, then this will stay my home frequency. So my home frequency won't change until this physical body passes. Is that... Yeah, and then your, uh, your frequency set free to, um, to transcend into another realm of existence. And that's even more cool. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was, I was right there with you, Sarah. I was, cause I was like, this is such a good question. Right. And, and, and the yeah, fact that, it, right. And you get into this idea of, of, you know, even law of attraction and, and all of this magnetic stuff that happens with our frequencies that we're aligned with through our consciousness and knowing that, you know, this is our anchor. I love the way you said that this is our home frequency. We're anchored here. We're anchored wherever our body is probably maybe because it's the heaviest, strongest, you know, densified frequency dense, at some level. Yeah. Right. And then once that's gone, then, you know, that we're sort of able to like be freed and uplifted because we don't, we kind of lost that anchor, right? Like the ship, you know, and then you can just sail on, so to speak, until you drop your next anchor, wherever that is. What happens when you drop the next anchor, Peter? Well, it depends what that anchor is. I mean, you're trying <laughs> to miss your foot. If you're going to drop an anchor, that's what the old sailors say. <laughs> that's true. But, um, but I, I, I think once we explore more of this multi-dimensional aspects of who we are and we start to explore more of these other realms, um, we really appreciate this beautiful portal that makes it all possible. Mm. And, you know, Sarah, in this reality is the portal through which all of the others are experienced. Okay, so there's all of these other places, but there's only one doorway. Okay, so we always return to the doorway. So don't worry about the doorway getting lost or anything, any of that sort of stuff, because you're always going to make a home, because it's like a homing beacon that you come back to. But what it does is it gives us a new appreciation of us in human form that without this human portal, none of these experiences would even be possible. So what it's done for me over the years, because I used to think, you know, I'm going to get out of my body as much as I can, et cetera, et cetera. Now I really appreciate the body that uh, without the body, no, I couldn't have any of this. Right. So, um, yeah, the body is no less important than any of the other incredible experiences that we have because it's the way through which we, uh, we experience them in the first place. Yeah, and really understanding the body, like I love that idea and, and we're sort of using it in this three-dimensional world of time and space, it's our portal into this physical world, right? So we, you can be in the quote unquote spiritual world, the quantum world or whatever, but to get into this reality, it's almost, almost like a video game. Sometimes you can even imagine, I like that idea of like, you're, we're using that to this body to as a portal into this world, right? It's how we explore it and, and go through it. And, and it's, it's Absolutely. from a different dimension when we're not using the body aspect of it. So it's so cool when you really start thinking about this stuff. It's like, just like, so great, great question, Sarah. All right. It looks like it's time for Gary's question then. All right, Gary, you still there? Yeah. All right. Saving the best for last. Oh, I know. Oh, those are so interesting thank you the uh just, just well, scrolling up there yeah go on gary do you want me just to read from yeah let me just say something first so i think there are people out there who don't understand what you guys are talking about so if gary when you or, or one of you guys want to guys talk about pre-birth planning and like you know what that is so that so that we can back the, some of us up so we can share in this with you so, so as I understand it, so that, that's when you, um, in your soul, uh, before you're born, you set an intention or part of a group of intention 
be part of a group of intention on what you want to accomplish or what you want to do in this life. Um, and then uh, sometimes you have people along with you to help you achieve that. And sometimes you achieve it at, in order to, to lift you up to a, to a higher place next time around, you know, maybe next time you don't come back because you've already, you, 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 you've already made it, I don't know. Um, but, but, but otherwise you, you, you raise your energy. Um, and, and sometimes you don't, sometimes you don't make it. Sometimes things happen. Um, but, but the goal is to raise yourself higher um, or raise other people higher. Some, sometimes people, Sometimes souls come back in order to help other people. They don't have to come back. They're done. They're, they've already gone to the next level. But they've come back to help other people to raise them up. That, that's how I understood it, Peter. Is it any, any add or comment on that? That's a, that's a very informed question, Gary. Thank you. Um, for those who haven't heard of it, I'd refer you to a piece of work by Dr. Michael Newton uh, called Life Between Lives, and which is an extension of the whole reincarnation scenario. And what Gary says is true. Uh, in that work, we've discovered that people, if they go back pre-birth, they uh, plan an incarnation before they come um, with the interactions that Gary's describing. There may be dedicated forks in the road that you set up that you move through and that helps to create some of these alternate realities, particularly the powerful ones that you may pursue. But the beauty of this is that you get a, a reset chance if you don't get it right in one particular life, if you take a linear model just for a moment. If you, um, if you don't get it right in this lifetime, you can come back and do another. Now, we often have a group of people that we continue to reincarnate with that will offer us um, ongoing learnings because they know us so well might have been helping us over lifetimes to learn and, and we them as Gary said mm -hmm. so um, the beauty of going in between into this um, Gary talked about the pre-life planning and that would be the, the, the conversation before he was Gary but one of the beautiful things about going in between is that you can understand um, patterns across the lineage of your soul because rather than all of these past lives one after the other when you're in between, you have a horizontal view across the lineage of your soul. Mm -hmm. Now in that, you can say, well, I've got a pattern of 20 lives that did this or 10 lives that did that or 15 lives that did that. So in my life as Gary, I'm going to work specifically on this theme because by doing that, it clears the pattern across the 20 lives just by getting it right in Gary's life. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, the beauty of that work is that we work outside of time and space and, and Gary's given us a beautiful snippet with the pre-life planning for Gary. But beyond that, there is the tell me across the, my whole soul lineage and the patterns that I've been working with and what can I do in Gary's life to set them all free. So this is part of the great awakening of humanity that this type of work is available now because we are working through human form into the lineage of our soul to understand some of these huge patterns and understand what you're doing there. Because when you clear something from the lineage of your soul, you are clearing something from the collective consciousness of humanity. Right. So what that is doing is that's raising the vibration of the collective, con the collective consciousness and helping us to move into a new level of consciousness by clearing the past in bulk. A lot of people are doing intergenerational trauma now and, and all of that and setting ourselves right. free from patterns inherited. But another beautiful way to do that is work with your whole soul lineage and go back and clear stuff from the past that you might have been carrying for centuries in different lifetimes. Yeah. So if you use a linear model, and of course, because we're beyond time and space, you've got access to all of that energy that needs to clear. So yeah, that's my ad, Gary, to what you said. Oh, thank you. Thank you. What a wonderful... Yeah, oh. yeah, but um, Michael Newton's work, Journey of Souls, Destiny of Souls, you know, I had the great honour to lead that organisation for 10 years. Um, it's based in the US. Um, incredible work that he brought to the world. So um, he's got some great books out there. He passed away, sadly, in 2016, but um, we think he's still around. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, I, those books, honestly, were they were some of the first books I read when I started like really getting into this kind of stuff as a young person and were so influential. And I mean, they were the kind of books that you read 
And you're like, oh my gosh, this makes so much sense. And it just answers these huge questions that we kind of forget about, right? We just pretend that we're born and we die and they're like, there's nothing else, right? So it's there, I highly recommend it. If you guys haven't read those books, um, in addition to Pete's book, Quantum Consciousness, which is, and I own that book and I have like so many dog ears and like scratch marks in it because it's just full of so many really good nuggets that are a lot like, you know, the stuff that we've been talking about tonight. So all, all great stuff to follow up on this. So thanks, Gary. Did you have any other questions about that? I want to cut you short. No, no. What so, so wonderful. I'm reading Courageous Souls right now and uh, trying to get a reading with Stacy Wells. Oh, she's good. Well, let out, us. She's booked out a couple of years, but she says I'm on the wait list. So let us know how it goes. Okay, we will do. Thank you, Peter. What a wonderful. Thank you so much. She's Gary. Well, wonderful. So I think that about does it on time. We have gone a little bit over, but wow, it was worth it. I, um, Peter, is there anything else you'd like to say to the group before I wrap it up? Just what a ball I've had, Kim. This has been fantastic. Uh, great to meet everybody. You know, when you connect with like-minded souls, I think it fuels all of our uh, hearts. And it just, you know, this is what we should be doing for 8 billion people. You know, yeah. not just 30 or 40, but one day we will. Yeah. And this is such a microcosm because, you know, we are really right now, we're all over the earth. You know, we're in Australia, the United States, we're in Europe and I mean, everywhere. So we've got these little points of consciousness literally connecting over this planet. So it really is a beautiful moment. And even those who are watching the replay are participating in this because remember, there's no such thing as time. So um, you can still be with us in the energy vibration of what we're working with. And, um, you know, I just have really enjoyed this conversation. I think there's so much more to come. I think we should have more of these talks down the road because there's so much more to explore in this area. And, um, and I'm really grateful for you coming and spending the time with us tonight and sharing all this because I love it. I think everyone really enjoyed it. And I also want to give a shout out to Megan, who is our senior faculty member at Intuition Lab, who's been here quietly behind the scenes uh, answering some questions and, and letting folks in. So thank you for that, Megan. And for everybody else who's come out tonight, it was so nice to meet some new people and to see some familiar faces and to share this energy, like Pete said, this you feel it in your heart. There's such a connection with like-minded spirits and kindred spirits. And, and I feel it. And I'm so grateful that we've had this opportunity to hold time and space together. So on that note, be sure to, um, you know, keep your quantum connection going. Let us know if you need anything. Pete's got a lot of great resources on your, what, which, what's your website, Pete? Institute for quantum consciousness.com. There you go. So, uh, Check that out. And if you're new to my work, you can find out stuff about me at kimchesney.com. We have lots of free stuff, both of us, that you can start doing to practice on this and start digging into this stuff on your own. Um, and then, um, you know, if you're, if you're called to go deeper, we, we have lots of classes and more fun workshops like this. So thank you all. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. And we hope to see you all again soon. Mm. Good night, everyone. Thanks, Kim. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.